Here's an awesome fit tip. Consistency beats hard, okay? So when you want to get great results, be consistent. Consistency is much better than going to the gym occasionally and beating the crap out of yourself. And if you look at your routine over the last year, you probably did that. So instead of going to the gym and hammering yourself and then taking time off or whatever, just be consistent. Even if the consistent workouts are easier or not perfect, they're superior because they're done consistently. What do you think that what do you think is the reason or the main reason why people seem to think the opposite is true, right? Like why do we continue to seek out these like punishing workouts that I feel crippling sore the next day? Like what was it about that that made us keep chasing it? Do you think that people really believe that that's the best indicator for it being a valuable or good workout? Do you think that's just still a prevailing myth. Yeah, I think soreness that's, is still there. Yeah, and as, I think that's as, what's as advertised. A gauge. Yeah, right? in social media, that's what you see, and that's what's glorified. And I think people overestimate the effects of a single workout. Yeah. So they're like, "Oh, I'm going to get a workout in. So if I just beat the crap out of myself, it's going to be so much more effective than an easy workout." Now, the truth is, uh, if it's appropriate, by the way, because oftentimes uh, super hard workouts inappropriate. But even if it's appropriate, it's only a little bit better than an easier workout. It's not a huge difference. Mm. The difference adds up over time. The cumulative effects are what make effective hard workouts much more effective than, let's say, effective easy workouts. Again, all of them being appropriate. So if you had to choose between being consistent and being inconsistent but working out super hard, even with appropriate workouts, even done properly, the consistent workouts are going to be much more effective. Cumulative, it just it just makes more sense. Yeah, do you think people are just like confused with how long it really kind of takes to build muscle? Totally. In general, like totally. like thinking that they could do this like mad sprint and rush to get there. Like I'm just going to get there as quick as I can by adding more things. Dude, people do this with diet too. They yeah. think they overestimate the damage and the success they can have with uh, an extreme day of eating, right? Like, ooh, I ate so bad, you know, on Thanksgiving. That's going to make me gain so much weight. No, no, no. Your 30-pound weight gain was this just a little bit more calories than you, are, than you should be eating on a daily basis cumulatively over time. One day isn't going to cause that much damage. Same thing with a workout. So, and, you know, the way I would communicate this to clients was I would tell them, when you go to the gym, practice your exercises. And you should feel more energy at the end of your workout than you did in the beginning. And really what that did is it encouraged appropriate training, but it also encouraged consistency because if your idea is that you need to beat the crap out of yourself when you go to the gym, you're more likely to skip the gym on those days where you're tired or stressed. Like, I don't feel like going crazy in the gym when I'm tired or stressed or didn't get great sleep. But if I know that I'm going to go to the gym and train uh, in a way where I'm practicing the exercises, train in a way where I'm going to have more energy, well, then I'm going to be more appropriate and more consistent with my workout. So it's just far more important that you're consistent versus just training hard. This is, by the way, why we got convinced, and, and one of our good friends in the fitness space, um, Shalene, uh, what's her last name, Johnson? Yep. She's been doing this for a long time, and we sat down. So we interviewed her. That was a great, great podcast, and um, she's really smart with fitness business. And she goes, why don't you guys have – a model where people can have a really low cost to access some of your workouts or your programs or, you know, exercises. And we're like, well, we're against it because we like complete programs and we want, we want people to do, you know, the, the, the full right yeah. workout, the most the right effective programming. way possible. And she's like, there's a lot of people that just don't want to take that, that big step, right. That, that, that step of buying a hundred dollar program, but they would do a really low monthly fee where you have access to at least workouts that are done properly and then at least they're consistent and they'll at least do something and do something right. And all of us were like, yeah, you're right. That's yeah. totally true. This is why we created the, if you go to Instagram, I don't, I don't think we've talked about this, have we? Maybe no. once? No. Yeah, I don't think we've we talked about it on the intro. Just alluded to it a few times. We, so, so we've never done this before and we were opposed to it. And I think we were opposed to it for the right reasons. But in reality, we might have hurt. Um, we might have not reached as many people had we done this. So you can go to Instagram or Instagram page, Mind Pump Media. You can now pay less than $5 a month. Mm -hmm. And every single week you get a workout. You get workouts every single week updated. Uh, all, they're all going to come from MAPS programs. Justin's putting it together. It's really, really nice. So you'll have workouts and it's a super low cost. It's Like I said, it's under $5 a month and you get good workouts and good demonstrations of technique and form, you know, done by us. 
Um, and we think that'll help those people who are always on the borderline, who don't take that leap into getting good workout programming, who are just kind of like, whatever, like, well, here you go. Now you yeah. Got or you just are kind of curious as to like some of the programming and workouts and some of our other programs and just get like a taste for it. Uh, down the road, we'll be kind of like introducing some of those workouts and concepts just so that way you can kind of get a good assortment uh, of options there and like uh, see if it's, you know, a direction you want to go. Or what I think is the biggest thing is that, and I, we've learned this lesson already multiple times in this business. And so it's kind of ironic that we didn't piece this together is people don't leave the platform that they use. Oh, that's it's so good. wild yeah, to me how this, this behavior is like, yeah, right. and we're all guilty of this. Like if you consume content on YouTube, it's like, you want all of your stuff Everything. on YouTube. If you consume your stuff on Instagram, you want all of it on Instagram. And, and so we have a large Instagram following and we haven't really created anything that caters specifically just to that audience. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that does just for that reason alone. Cause I know there's a lot of people that that's they you know how they get their workouts they have a famous influencer yes. that they follow and they just watch what they do that's and the they other go part and of it like mirror and mimic them yeah. That, yeah that's the other part of it Shaleen is like do you really want them to get their fitness information from these crappy influencers and we're yeah. like no i mean okay, okay now you're talking yeah so now <laughs> I'm like listening now. let's give people an option where they don't have to buy our program and they have access to a new workout every week by the way this is a trainer hack if you're a trainer and you're watching this like what an easy way, because you often have to, as a trainer, one of the, especially in the beginning, one of the challenges is like coming up with workouts and how to extra and how to demonstrate certain exercises and cues and all that stuff. Well, now you have us teaching you um, on Instagram um, and you could just follow along basically. What's up everybody? Today's giveaway, the new program, MAPS Bands. Again, it's an advanced band-based workout. You can win it for free. Here's how. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, everybody else, this is a brand new program, so it's on sale during the launch period, which ends in three days. Literally, as of the dropping of this episode, you have 72 hours to get this program on sale. So it's $30 off, plus you get two free eBooks. So check this out. If you're interested, you go to mapsbands.com, use the code BANDS30, or click on the link at the top of the description below. You'll get the discount, plus you'll get two eBooks for free, Ultimate Bodyweight Training Guide, and Quick Meals for Health and Fitness. It's our first cookbook. All right, back to the show. Um, did you guys see what the what they're saying about the GL, I think they're called GLP-1 inhibitors or, or agonists, um, Ozempic and all those. Oh, you know, yeah, what are they type. saying? Uh -uh. So have, have you guys heard the term now? This is coming out in the media. Ozempic face? Ozempic face? It's called Ozempic There's face. There's a face that goes with it? So... This is so funny. Media is hilarious wow. with how they they distort and twist things. So they're like, more and more people are going to their doctors after using Ozempic, and they're and and their doctors are noticing something called Ozempic face, where their skin is a little saggy and they're looking like they're a little more gaunt or old. I'm like, yeah, because they lost weight, <laughs> they lost body fat. That's what happens. You store body oh, fat wow. in your face as well, and just like the rest of your body, you start to lose body fat, especially if it's a lot then you'll notice that in, in more fat in your face does make your face look fuller and less wrinkles. And so they're, 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 it's a, it's a great way to get people to click into. That's what you're going to talk about. Ozempic? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about something else. No. So there's something that's, I wish I could recall where, who I heard talk about this first, but what they're starting to find right now, this is actually a positive thing related to. Oh, Ozempic, I know what you're talking about. Is yes. that people are quitting other behaviors. Yes. So these people that are taking smoking, it, yeah, drinking, smoking, gambling, drinking, yeah, yeah, all these yeah, other behaviors, the impulsive kind of yes, which behaviors. makes sense, right? Because it's kind of like one of those things, all or nothing. With people, it's like ah, oh, fucking, I'm not eating well, so I'm smoking my cigarettes too. I'm doing all these other things where now that I'm refraining and I have discipline in my life and I'm not making these bad choices food wise and I'm restricting mm, there. I'm also restricting sense. other bad behaviors in my life. So I'm going to disagree huh. with you. And okay. Here's why. Okay. And here's why. So, by the way, the title there, of The that, Atlantic is... That's where it was at. Did yes. scientists accidentally invent an anti-addiction drug? By the way, the, 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 the drug name, Ozempic's the brand name, is semaglutide. Mm -hmm. And these were all these... Doug, come from this for GLP-1 agonists. I think there's this class of drugs. This Pfizer just came out with a with a, uh, a, a, like a, a second phase trial of their own that's coming out that shows similar results. They're all very similar. Oh, yeah. They, they want to get in on the money, actually. Here's what I think's happening, bro. 
if you are changing your nutrition through discipline and structure and behavior changing, then it can make sense that they would also change other things. By the way, sometimes people go the opposite. They take away the food, but then other habits come up like smoking and stuff because they, they're not dealing with the root cause. When they are feeling like they have to restrict and they're holding back versus when they appetite suppress and they don't have it. Different. Well, I maybe and I but although I think there may be something happening in the Different brain. Trigger there. Yeah. I do. I think that there's a mechanism. I'm speculating, okay, so I don't know. That this a similar mechanism that that triggers people to eat when they're stressed or anxious or bored also gets people to do other types of impulsive behaviors. And that may be kind of what's happening. So well, it reduces that, I, all impulsive behavior. Well, I think that's what that article alludes to. That's what it alludes to? Okay. Yeah, I believe that's what that that's what it's basically saying is that it's I think it's helping with just impulsive behaviors altogether. <sighs> so I mean Nonetheless, reg regardless if there is a direct correlation, here's a great example of our uh, direct causation from it. If there's any sort of correlation with it, there's some value there. I mean, shit, if that, if you end up taking this as a way to keep yourself from, you know, munching on chips and stuff like that, and then you also stop smoking cigarettes a or byproduct, drink, like, yeah, yeah, stop biting your nails or anything. Yeah. Like that. That's so crazy. I mean, super interesting, right? Even this, if it's just anecdote or whatever, like it's, if that's a byproduct of what's happening, like, you know, I, I've been asked a lot about this and I've actually had gone back and forth with some people, some other health and fitness people in DMS and stuff like that. Like, and I don't know where I, where I land on this completely. Right. Like, we always talk about going all natural, the healthy way. Sure. We're always going to promote that first, right? And and if you take something like this, and let's say it does lose you a bunch of weight, if you don't address the root cause of how that weight gain happened, it's just going to end up coming back, or you're going to exchange that for another behavior. Yeah, right. But you're we're seeing some crazy results, and I'm and I'm wondering that you know even if it doesn't necessarily address the root cause with some of these people if it gets them moving in the right direction agreed and then they well, then address that yeah and I, and I imagine too like i was actually uh it's interesting you brought up ozempic because i was talking to my friend about it and like i was hanging out with them and they put on a substantial amount of weight uh since i'd seen them over the years and you know were asking me kind of advice and this and that and the other and like my friend's a big dude like he's he got up to like 400 something pounds now and he's like you know, he's six, eight. And, and so he's like, he's filled out, but he's, he's a big, big guy. Uh, and I'm just like, I know how many times he's worked his ass off to, to get down to like 360 to like get down to 350. And yeah. it's just been like torture for him. Right. And he goes back and forth and like, he, he'll try this crash thing and he'll do, and to get something that sort of at least gives him like, you know, a bit of a win that like he can start feeling that like, again, it's the craving part of that too. And the, in the, the impulsiveness of the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. I, I look, uh, none of us here are absolutists with natural, right? I think you could go too extreme there. I think Western medicine has, um, lots of value. Look, this is how I feel about anxiety medications. Are there things you could do to reduce anxiety naturally? Like exercise, meditate, sleep more, get sunshine. Yes, but sometimes it's so bad that you need to bridge the gap with a medication to help you do. Right. If it's so debilitating, you're not going to take action towards the root cause. And what's the point? That happens with depression. It happens with anxiety. Right, right, and it right. can happen with someone's behaviors around nutrition. If this is something you've struggled with your entire life or just it's just really hard for you for whatever... Like these uh, peptides can help. Yeah. Now, I don't think it's the answer. See, it's that's not, where I. It's, it's not the long term answer. No, at all. no. But they're showing to be very effective bridges in, yeah. in, in agile, right? So you can use it in addition to exercising properly, uh, working on your relationship with food, and it may help you. And, and it's showing this. Now, I've never trained a client who's used these because they didn't exist, but when, you know, back when we were training clients. But if I train clients today, that's exactly what I would do. I would have them use that yeah. if this was something that they struggle with. But then we would also look at all the other things that we talk about on the show and eventually look at, okay, can we get you off this now that we've developed these behaviors and habits and now that you're here? And I think that will increase the success rate if used properly, if you do it properly. Yeah, and I think too, like, like the real obese, like the morbidly obese, like where it's just like, you know, if we can just get some momentum formed, you know, we would at least just get that initial energy uh, back into like, okay, I, you know, I actually, I'm seeing things happen and, and then transition them into the healthy behaviors mm -hmm. and the, uh, the better food choices and the lifestyle of the whole thing. Um, you know, at least if we can get, grab their attention. I yeah. think, I think the part that I, I wrestle with or why I have a hard time deciding on where I land on it is because I also recognize 
being speaking positively about it and promoting it, the amount of people that are probably going to abuse it or use it and they shouldn't use it. It's always the wrong category of people that'll yeah. Right. Like so there so there's 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 a, okay. there's there's like it comes with like this this communication around okay like let's this is one step in the direction of us, you know, fixing these issues and if it's this, an intervention versus this, like oh this is the answer to me being fat. This like, is yeah. why this is why who you go to and work with makes all the difference in the world. Do you go to a doctor that writes you a prescription and then weighs you? Or are you going like mphormones.com? mphormones.com, are people there work with these GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide? So you can get it there. Mm -hmm. But also, this is a company we work with. So they're going to talk about things with you like, by the way, this is going to make you eat less. Make sure you hit your protein targets because otherwise you'll lose muscle as well as body fat. By the way, make sure you do strength training so you can maintain a fast metabolism. Otherwise, your body will adapt and like through the muscle loss process. By the way, here's some other people you can work with to help you develop those better relationships. So it makes a huge difference uh, who you work with. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I like the fact, that's why I'm okay with us promoting and talking about things like this is because we have this private forum that is coupled with that because the conversation yes. doesn't end there. It doesn't end with, totally. hey, go take this and this will solve no, this problem. So I definitely don't want to message that. Because yeah. that's, that, that's, this is some of the concern that like some of the coaches and trainers have heard uh, that have come out to me like, oh man, my company that I work for is now promoting Ozempic and they're in the, for yeah. fat loss. And I just, where do you guys stand on that? Are you guys anti? And it's like, well, you know, it's not as, it's not as black and white. It's not this like. It's all about how you use it. Yeah. I mean, you've heard us talk about shakes. Like I, I, I used to get frustrated Same with, thing. with <laughs> yeah. the doctors that would, you put these people on these, you know, morbidly yeah. obese people with three shakes a day. Right. Okay. Well, there's two sides of this, right? One, I don't agree with that, right? That's like that person's going to go back and it's not going to work. It's going to work, but that person is so bad they're going to die from obesity if we don't either do the gastric you have bypass to do on them. Radical. Yeah, have to, I have to do something radical to get that off. So then we can at least like get some breathing room to then talk about, hey, let's let's work on this and and approach it the, the better way. Okay, well then that's a different story. So yeah, I, I had good success with clients who did that. Not and it was against my wishes, right? They would come to me and say, "Oh, I'm already in this doctor prescribed diet. I'm on the shakes thing." You know, that was a thing there for a second. I think it was like oh, early yeah. 2000s like people were doing that. And I would let them know my, you know, why I didn't necessarily like it. However, I would work with them and say, "Look, here the challenge is is not going to be while you're doing that. The challenge is when you're done." But I'm glad you're with me. I'm going to walk you through the process of what that looks like. And I had decent success. Had they not had that coaching, I mean, the success rate would have been dismal. Like it is, the data shows the yep. success rate to be absolutely terrible. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. So, hey, I I got something for you guys. I this. So you remember the? I don't know how many episodes back this was. We were talking about, and I don't know how we got here, but we were talking about animals being stressed, you know, and how that could affect the the, the, the meat. The, the the meat. Yeah, well, like and, how and we Sal were, trained a zookeeper. Yeah, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, not that far back. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah no, no, wow. that's way far back. Just not no recently. I recently, did. remember recently we were, and yeah, I can't I remember how. Maybe Doug or Andrew remembers like how we got to that place. We but, were talking about um, lab grown meat versus and, uh, and, and then talk about like taking care of animals. We we're talking about Kobe beef yeah, yeah, yeah. and like right, veal right. and then like like stuff like that, right? So check this out. There's a there's a, a lobster place in Maine that gets the lobsters high before they cook them. What? Because it calms them down. Wow. So it brings their stress levels way down before they before they Have boil. There's a difference in the meat. Like yeah, the they say it makes a huge the... difference. Wow. Look up lobsters get get lobsters high, Doug, before cooking. So them. now here's what's interesting about Dude, this. They're basically like sea insects, though. I mean, oh, they're spiders. Yeah, exactly. It's the spiders. same. Yeah, but you got to think something is being profile. chemically released when you're under. You think you're going to die. So here's my okay. So I think there's two things. One, having an animal be chronically stressed is mm. different than them being stressed right before they die because. Is an animal ever not stressed right before they get killed in nature? Oh, yeah. Like, it's you think the gazelle's like, you know, just yeah, but if they're galloping, eight, like, if, oh, they're, eight, eight. if they're so high, they're too dumb to know what's happening to them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're not, they're not, they're, they're, they're not as smart as the humans are. So, like, you would know, like, you're getting yeah. cooked or you're getting killed, but maybe just, just by getting them high, they don't have no idea. Like, I don't oh. know, man. I wonder if that's a gimmick. You know what I mean? So, they, 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 they like, tested this. It wasn't did just you? like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, she did, they did this whole thing where they were, the I'd be curious so, to try the difference. Let's Restaurant man is trying to get lobsters high before cooking them alive. So one of the Hilarious. things that they did to test it is, uh, so like the, the lobsters, when you put them in a bucket with the lobsters, they use their claws yeah. to attack and stuff like that. You get them high, you just chill. Oh, didn't how do are shit. they getting them high? They just like hot box them. Yeah, they, little... they, they, they put like a little thing. If I if I understood the article right, <laughs> they put them in this. like a box yes. and then they and they put like a little bit of water so they kind of handle it. And then put they a little freaking, Snoop Dogg and they hot the box the shit out of the out of the out of the thing. Hey, dude, this is still mean. Nice. Though, right? And this and this restaurant is like drove for like some of the best 
lobster, I believe. <laughs> oh, I <don't> <laughs> that I, is a cool. I don't know about the taste. I wonder if that's a gimmick, but the fact that they don't claw or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're so so that so if <laughs> if you read into it, they they're known for like having some of the best lobster over there. That might not be why though, but that's interesting. So I mean, so, Maine's known for some of the best lobster yeah, anyways, yeah, I mean, right? So in general, I think it's there, a, but, an excuse for people to smoke pot and blow it into a lobster box. I think it's cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so good. I, now I'm I like, think, I want to go to a restaurant. Hey, I want to go to a restaurant that does it, dude. I just want to see, dude. Uh, yeah, I thought that was. I'll pretty give funny. them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So how do they kill? Is that how they kill lobster? They throw in a, boi a boiling pot of water. They boil them alive, yeah. right? Yeah. Or they boil it slow because it's. It, the whole thing, it's like the fresh, because you go pick it out and then they like put them right into the boiling the water. Next, yeah. That's yeah, a good question. I don't know if it's a slow boil or it's a, they yeah, drop them know. in. Yeah, rolling boil. So it's already boiling. It's boiling hot, I and think. And then you yeah. throw it in. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, that would and suck. Then they scream. Well, you know. Oh yeah, I thought I thought it was a slow boil. No, they didn't. They, they, no, I think they just have a rolling boil, like it's like fully boiling, and then they just they boom. Top, toss it in. Yeah, that, it's, it's not a very nice thing. Not to a do. humane way to go. Well, for yeah. sure. Well, you know, what are you supposed to do? Oh, yeah. Mister High. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Price you pay when you have a tasty. Tail. I mean, hey, you know what though? Fuck, nature's messed up, dude. There's hey, what's that page on Instagram? Uh, nature is metal. Yeah. Like, oh, I love that. I love people that are like all like, oh, flowers and daisies. Like, go no. if you've ever seen an animal hunt no. another animal. Have you guys ever seen survival? Did you fittest, see the, the latest one they had with these two bears fighting? Yes. for like I don't know five. Did you minutes see when straight? they hit, like when they hit each other? Yeah, like the vibration. They bite the, the neck. Just, rah, 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 like they were just thrashing Powerful. each other. I, lo I, lo I love that IG. I just watched a video where an elephant. There was a huge, like a huge tree, like roots and everything. It wasn't like a small, it was like a big ass. He like pushed a it over like a branch. Oh, he just pushed it and just crushed it. That's how strong an elephant is? Dude. That's yeah. crazy to me. Yeah. That's Elephants crazy. are cool. Yeah, yeah that's crazy to me. Anyways, anyway. uh, uh, I have another one, dude, for you guys. That I thought this was, this, we've been talking a lot about AI stuff, yeah. right? So um, AI images, an AI image surfaces of uh, the Pentagon taking on an explosion. Totally fake, right? Someone made it and sure. put it on the internet. Drops the S and P thirty points in minutes. So the speculation just tricked them. Yeah, just <gasps> by putting on. So the speculation is Don't like this me. is the future of like inside trading. Oh so my like, god, those fuckers! Is, so they just is, they can short is, stocks, drop that, keep it all like yeah. Because a thirty point it drop is significant. Yeah, thirty point drop within minutes because of that that wow. that picture was servicing, and then it took a minute for people to realize that it was. A How are fake, we going to control this? I don't know. Dude. So I watched an interview, with and you, and here's the thing: that's how that's not Dang. controllable. Is the, that's just human behavior. There's people that if they saw the Pentagon get a blow a picture of the hit, and that was news before that was going you can out, verify it. Oh, they, yeah, before they would sell. Oh my God, sell socks! This is going to make this whole stock market crash. Let me be one of the first ones out. So human behavior is going to that's going to happen all the time, no wow. matter what. I watched an interview with Elon, and they asked him about his what, what, what he thinks the most dangerous things about AI is, and I thought he was going to say stuff like it's going to kill us, the weapons, whatever. He goes, no. He goes, AI is going to be able to create articles that are so convincing and twist information so effectively and just completely engulf social media and all media that it will be able to influence us and manipulate yeah. us and we won't even know. You won't know up from down. And I thought, wow, that is true. That has to be the most dangerous Our brain aspect. will just melt. Not that Terminator is going to show up and kill us, but kill it ourselves. will manipulate us. Kill ourselves into thinking that we're totally with wow. that. So along those lines, did you hear Great. that they, they're doing hearings on AI regulation? They're, yeah. they're talking about potentially creating a new agency to regulate AI. You know what's crazy about this oh, is that's that- not, That's not a good thing. Well, I mean, no. well, two things. One, good luck. Like you're going to try and regulate, like is how? This, is this the world forum or is this like just our government? Our no, they're, government. They're, they're talking about wanting to create a whole new, like like a, the who or whatever like that for the literally for just, just AI. AI yeah. Yeah. So a whole new regulatory department. Yeah. So like it would be the I US see. is doing this. Right. EU is already talking about this. Mm -hmm. So this is just for the US. Yeah. But there's two parts of it. One, like how- like, how are you going to check that? How are you going to... And two, this is how companies basically create a moat around themselves. That's right. Right? This mm -hmm. is how companies come out and be like, oh, we got AI working right now. We think it's really dangerous. We should help you guys regulate it. And what they do is they create re regulations to eliminate any competition. potential competition or sure. innovation. 100%. And what, it was, what's his face from the, who's Sam, working with Google? Sam, yeah, Sam yeah, Altman? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Already who's working with Google and stuff like that. That was a part of this hearing. Who's like all for, of course you're what all for. They call for. it regulatory capture. There's actually a term for that, by the way, when um, a new market emerges 
and those leading the market go to government to create regulations to eliminate. Meanwhile, it's going to be put out in the media mm-hmm. like, oh, we need this, so important for our safety, and everybody's going to push it and be all for it, and it's going to happen. All the big dogs are still going to use it. <laughs> it's like, that's the thing. The technology there it exists. It's not like it's just going to be bottled up and you know, put away for everybody. I agree. That I also just see it as a, another massive money pit that our government has to. Yeah, so and it's I, just another thing that we're going to spend tons of money or, on. Or a way that they're going to start like working together. Like a defense together. system or something. Yeah, well, this is how it. they're going to work together. You're going to approach, you're going to need lobbyists now. All of a sudden, you're going to need lobbyists to approve your new AI model. Mm. And the lobbyists are going to talk to these politicians and the politicians are going to say, well, if you make it do this, then we'll approve uh-huh. it. Or if you let it do that, and the and and what their number one goal is cool more cronyism. It, yes, it's going to be to protect the people that vote for them or whatever the jobs. And they're going to say things like, "Well, if you add these copyright protections, or if you protect Hollywood, or if you do that, or if you promote this idea, that way I can pass this bill or whatever." It's going to be weird. But I also I also don't think you can regulate it. I really don't. Like how how that's kind how of where I'm that? at. It's, it's so it's fast out. changing. I mean, and it's out. Like, That's the do? worst part about all this, though, because they will pass that. They will create a regulatory system out of there and a whole new department that's going to cost there billions of dollars behind. <laughs> to manage, and they still won't be able to fully regulate. That's yeah. why it's so dumb. It's like you're gonna they're gonna go through all the, the waste, yeah. yeah all the money to make that happen and all the bureaucracy yep. and behind the behind the scene bullshit handshaking and hand jobs. And meanwhile, <laughs> there, there still will be a ones. massive black market inside that will go around all that stuff. Yeah. One hundred. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was thinking about this and like because people are comparing uh, AI to nuclear weapons and mm-hmm. how we need to regulate it. You know, nuclear weapons are super dangerous, obviously, but there was that human element where I mean that that prevented us from destroying the whole world was that there were because here's what AI could potentially do. Let's say AI controlled n- all the nukes in the US. Uh, it could say, well, if we launch these nukes, they will retaliate and Yes, 70% of the world will be destroyed, but more of us will survive. And then over the next 30 years, we'll rebuild and dominate. And it would do with just that simple calculation versus a human saying, not worth it, not worth all the death and destruction. I don't think we should do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the thing is that will it have the same discernment power, the same fear, or is it just going to be a numbers game? Well, even now, I mean, isn't the versions we've all seen so far just like chat driven in terms of like what's been written and said and like, um, you know, it's the collective sort of communication everybody's been inputting on the internet uh, versus it being like some kind of um, get into your your system and like get all the access passcodes and all that stuff. I mean, are we there yet too? Or is it like... Uh, just right now, it's just the the chat bots that they're concerned about. So far, that's, all, market. that's all we get. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's like <laughs> that's all we get. That's bro. all we're being told it's right like now. It's like a sophisticated Google is what yeah. we get. So the government's already got some crazy Dude, shit because there's quantum computers and all that. Like they say, they're gonna roll out in like five years, and and it's like they're gonna be so much more powerful than any of these chat bots could even hope to be. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's- I saw some article estimating like 300 million jobs to be replaced. In like the very near future. Very near future. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a radical. I mean, I already hear it. I hear it. I uh, who was I just talking? I think it was in my 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 Hampton group. What's the layoffs happening? Their company just like cut their team in half. Well, copywriters are getting are gone. Yes, already. They they literally cut their team in half. Like copywriters, the amount of engineers and code writers they need. Like it literally like eliminated like half of them. I thought. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is going to be. You know, they they already have emerging. I don't know what they call it. Like. Emerging skills, I think is the term, where the AI, these AI models, which are designed to do one thing, are just without nobody telling it, whatever, learning new skills on its own, <laughs> like teaching itself languages and teaching That's it. That's what's trippy. Yeah, on its own. Emerging, um, I don't know what it's called, emerging intelligences or skills, emerging skills, but it's on its own trying to learn certain things. So where, you know, where could that potentially lead? But I mean, try regulating it. It's like, we're here, dude. Like, yeah. How are you going to shut this down? Like we've discovered fire. No, it won't. It won't get. It can't. Yeah, it can't. I, it's I too. Know. It's too. It's too. And even if it, if they do regulate, <laughs> they'll just a black market will surface yeah. for just all the. Got to figure out how to work with it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> at no, best. I don't no, know. One hundred percent. Hey, did I tell you guys I read this interesting? Um, I found some statistics online. I got to figure out where I found it so we could post it. But I wanted to see what the top causes of deaths were for bodybuilders, like competitive bodybuilders. Hmm. Because I want to see if that extreme pursuit 
you know, what damage it causes to the body or whatever. I was just going down this rabbit hole. And what's the most dangerous uh, drugs that they're, they've been doing? Well, it's just the amount of drugs that they use and yeah. the combination of them. And then the lifestyle, people don't realize that the, the high level bodybuilding lifestyle by itself mm -hmm. is just not healthy. Um, bodybuilding's healthy. That lifestyle of bodybuilding. Yeah, the extreme version. Right. So as I thought, most of them die a little earlier than the average. Um, just like most high level athletes, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, but high level athleticism is not longevity. There's a, there's a price you pay for that level of performance and bodybuilders are no difference. So heart disease was at the top or heart issues. Um, obviously all the drugs that they take and what they do with their bodies, stresses the heart, kidney issues, liver issues. Here's the trip. Remember, we're talking about competitive bodybuilders who for all intents and purposes are not doing things that are healthy to their body. They have much lower rates of cancer than the average person. Mm. This just goes to show the protective effects muscle. of muscle yeah. and strength training. Of all the forms of exercise you could do, strength training has the most anti-cancer effects. Muscle has anti-cancer effects. So here you have all these bodybuilders. Mm. By the way, a lot of them take a lot of growth hormone. Yeah. Growth hormone in the presence of tumors will stimulate cancer, right? Yet their cancer rates are lower than the average person. Just that goes to show you. Kind of crazy, right? That is crazy. Yeah, I found that really, really interesting. Huh. No, that's, that is really interesting, especially considering that they do die at a younger younger age and they're abusing a lot of other things, the fact that they're not getting that at a much higher rate. But also I think shows you how closely linked I think probably cancer is to like obesity and like how bad- It's, it's cancers to obesity and lack of muscle. Yeah. Building muscle is very anti-cancer. Mm. And yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a lot of different reasons why, but um, this is- this is pretty cool stuff. Well, if you, I mean, I guess what I was alluding to was I've just heard that like, uh, as they've got evolved and gotten more extreme in that sport, like they start manipulating more with insulin yeah, and that being like something that was like leading towards like a lot of, uh, incidents of death. Yeah. Well, insulin's dangerous. Yeah. You could take a huge dose of testosterone or a huge dose of growth hormone and you're okay. You take too much insulin one time and you're dead. You know, right. it'd be, would it be an even more interesting thing for me to see statistics wise with with that is actually if you took those people and you took them out of bodybuilding, if they still would have found a, a way to earn early death, meaning that oh. a, meaning that are they a, just they just abuse, to go, yeah. abused like many people that mm. gravitate towards that sport or any cr some crazy sports like some the, extreme something yeah. extreme like that that's you know uh, unhealthy has psychological stuff going on. They have major body dysmorphia going on, uh -huh. or they have massive insecurities, yeah. or they're running from a bad home life that they so had you know, growing up. Painkillers too. Yeah, like yeah. So they're they're drugs, ab yeah. uh, they're abusing cocaine yeah. and and painkillers and all these other stuff. And so I wonder if, if that you are taking a already, you know, broken, you know, portion of people. And then we're comparing them to the general population. It's like That's I wonder a great if you, point. I yeah. wonder if you pulled them out of bodybuilding, they would probably still find I a way to early probably, death. They sure. might be worse off. Sure, maybe. I know a lot of people, right. and I know you do too. I know a lot of people that did the extreme bodybuilding side, but it probably saved their life because mm -hmm. had they not gone that route, they would have been addicted to worse drugs, right. or heroin, alcohol. crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, no. Isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah. Because at totally. least there's a level of discipline there, right? Where they have to wake up, work out, they got to eat right, at least have a good workout so they can't necessarily mess themselves up too much. Mm -hmm. They avoid other drugs because maybe they'll make me fat or, you know, I'm not going to be able to work out type of deal. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's a really good observation. Yeah. Wouldn't you think that? I mean, well, from all of our experience and being around the space that long. Look, like I, I I don't necessarily have the healthiest uh, relationship with exercise. Much healthier now than it was before, but I still have issues and with supplements. So if I didn't have that, I know I would be worse off. I know it. I would have a tendency. It would be something else. Yeah, it would be something worse. Right, right. It's probably what it, what right, it would right. be. So. You know, it was funny. Speaking of bodybuilders, I saw it was uh, hanging out with my friends uh, up in Truckee, and we were, like, watching music videos and kind of comparing, and contrasting, like, some bands we found. It was really actually, like, a. I preferred that to just sit and watching TV and, like, vegging out and whatever. Like, it was cool because now I have this whole new playlist I would have never even oh, cool. had before. But so there's this band called, like, Bill Murray and it's spelled like B I L uh, M U R I or something. But the guy, it's a really trippy video where he, he like puts his face on a lot of like 
viral video people and like uh, I don't know it's hard to describe but it's like a very artsy kind of weird video and then who pops up but uh, Juji Mufu in there <laughs> and he's doing his thing and I was like oh wow he made it into like a music video the, the guy is like all over the place man wow. so yeah. you know what's cool about that I was talking with my old my older kids my teenage kids about music and we were listening to music in the car and I was playing, we were going through playlists because if my daughter sits in the front, she all of a sudden assumes control of everything. Okay, so it's annoying to me, but whatever. So she'll change the music or whatever. And I'm like, honey, stop. Anyway, so we're going back and forth. So then we start a conversation and we went to the 70s playlist. And I said, this is the last decade of real, pure, authentic music. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, let me show you. So then <laughs> I have her pull up her phone. She goes on YouTube and I said, pull up. Led Zeppelin, pull up the Ramones, pull up, you know, all these different artists. And I said, what do you notice about them? And she's like, I don't know, long hair, whatever. I said, no, are any of them good looking? And she's like, no. <laughs> and I said, you know why? Yeah, yeah, I said, because uh, in those days, spoke for in those days, you didn't know what the artists looked like until they were already famous and popular. And then you saw them. <laughs> they had radio had face. Yeah, it was all about the music. Yeah. It had nothing to do with about the, the video or their appearance. It was all about the music. Yeah. And so we were having this conversation and my kids are like, wow, that like video, like music videos and all that stuff totally changed. Well, is that the, how's the song go? Video v killed the, the yeah. Yeah, radio star. The radio star. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Why yep. That, yeah. That's exactly what that out. means, right? It's yep. so funny. So, I, and I, I don't know about you guys, but when I listen to music be, before music videos, I don't know about you guys, I could hear it. I can mm -hmm. hear the authentic. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being. <laughs> why are you laughing? It's there, true. There's like a funny bias that you have. You're yeah, like a fucking well, boomer talking about music right that's now. Exactly. I mean, because yeah, I mean, because I've I, been there, but yeah, I mean, we, I, I get it. But there's, there's, there's artists that are are still. It's just they, they're fewer and far between, and they're less popular because what becomes popular now is yeah. something that looks cool yeah. right like the britney spears the 98 well, degrees the backstreet boys i mean that was the beginning of all that stuff right we yeah. realized like man if they can just kind of sing yeah. but they were hot or had personality like oh my god mm -hmm. we could sell the shit out of them yeah, so do you watch mtv you now? know yeah no nobody that's what i mean it. it's like where do you even find like the stuff that's out there there's so much underground music like that i, I guess i was like tripping out on the fact that I didn't even know all these bands that existed and like all these different genres. And I was showing Adam like, dude, I was into this like Korean, like um, uh, they're like a hip hop group, like these two guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're sick. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's I great. had no idea. Like, and uh, so you're the ox, I think is what they're called. But like, there's, there was just quite a few different genres of like really interesting, but like not super popular um, music groups out there that were like, uh, I mean, you just really have to dive deep. Well, and, you know how they break through hole. now. What the, now it's like you break through on YouTube. You got to prove yourself yeah, yeah, without yeah. being produced, without having a record label. Yeah. And like now, totally. you can find someone who's very talented who comes up. I mean, you guys have seen me. I was sharing that. Uh, what's his name? Is it Harry? Uh, not Harry Styles. What was the? <laughs> not the I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, it's it's I Harry. So, it's like Harry yeah. something. Like that. Remember the guy? The guy who I showed you guys. Oh, like, he just flows. Yeah, off flows whatever off of like four or five words that somebody gets. I can't think of his name right now. But. I mean, uh, yeah, he's really you have an big. example of someone who went viral from TikTok or YouTube and then becomes famous mm -hmm. and is now getting all kinds of deals and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, you could you could find that now. But if someone's like produced, like they 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 target that now. They look for someone who is attractive and you know you know has the personality. And it's like, okay, as long as you can somewhat sing, we figure it out. Harry, Harry Mack. Mack, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Now you see why it's why it's. Why Dude, it's I got to tell you guys something so funny that my two year old said to the nanny that my, my wife was like, "Huh?" And then she figured out what was going on. <sighs> so the the other day, uh, you know, it was hot. We're outside. Took you know, took my shirt off. He takes his shirt. We're all just you know playing with the water or whatever. I go inside, and my wife, like many wives, like many women. If she sees what even resembles a pimple or a blackhead, it's her favorite thing to do. Is to <laughs> oh, this is a, this is definitely a woman thing. Women love this. There's there, we've talked about this before. There's pages yeah. that they follow where that's all dude, they do. Doctor Pimple Popper has a TV show now. It's yeah. just as popular. This is like, definitely Whoa. back to our monkey oh you know, origins or whatever, right? So anyway, she did that. So that happened the other day. Anyway, today to the to the nanny, Arias goes, "Oh, I I like it when Mama presses and squeezes Papa's nipples." <laughs> and the nanny's like what <laughs> oh yeah mama mama presses and squeezes for boss nipples it's just kind of, oh pimples like, that's very uh, revealing <laughs> I'm like oh my so, god what's going on here a little son? bit of a difference there. <laughs> oh my god kids are hilarious dude she took him she took him camping uh, not camping excuse me hiking and she wanted him to get like the full experience so she brought like a camel back and 
did the whole thing, right? Um, and so he wanted his own camelback. So he, <laughs> she goes on Amazon. He picks one. It's one for like little toddlers. It's got flames on it. And now he's just wearing it throughout the house. Like he just walks around to the house with his pajamas and he, he wants the one with the flames, dude. Yeah, yeah. I was like, got the, I was that kid. I'm like, yeah, flames, yeah. You know, <laughs> burning, <laughs> you know, or like army or something. Oh, yeah. it's so cute, dude. Oh, I know, it's hilarious. Oh. But just walk around his like around the house, you know. He just needs some water. He pulls his back. <laughs> 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 it just goes and play. Did you say Max had one? It was oh yeah, before? Max. Had, Max has a Mickey Mouse one, and I remember when he first started wearing it, it would like throw his balance off because it was like. <laughs> Too bigger heavy. than he was yeah he's still today that's like he, that's I, I think it's the cutest thing ever when he gets it gets to playing and stuff like that he pu- loads up a bunch of his toys in his backpack and then he runs around the house and does his thing and then he can get pulls his backpack off and does it it's like he's at such a cool age right now it's so fun i mean you're there right now too where like every week it's like a new something different yeah a new sentence mm-hmm. like comes out and what always blows my mind is the when you hear it it's like i've never said that or like, where did you hear that? Or how did you, how did you piece that together? You know what I'm saying? Like we were driving the car last night, and we're like, oh, it's oh, it's, boy, you got to stay up late because we were at his, uh, I mean, at Katrina's um, brother and sister's house, uh, having dinner and barbecue and stuff like that. And so he got to stay up a little bit later. So we're driving home, and we're, and I'm tell, talking to him in the back seat. And I'm like, oh, you got lucky again, dude. You got to stay up past your bedtime. And he's like, oh, the sun's not down, Dad. Yeah. I'm just like, I've never said that, you know, the it's like, down. yeah, like I've just never said that in front of him. Like he's, he's now at that age now where he can start to piece things together himself and put together that when you see that cognitive, uh, like yeah. sleep, it's a trip to watch it happen. It's, you know? it's so crazy. And so, you know, we're, I told you guys, Jessica and I are, are doing these, these different techniques with, with the kids and she does a lot of this. She learns it and then she shows me and. Sometimes it's so frustrating because I want to go back to, you know, quote unquote, old school style. Like if he throws something at me while I'm playing with the baby, I get, I get really infuriated and I want to tell him no or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. But really what you do is you sit, you, you stop, Hey, we don't throw hard things. We throw soft things. Did you want my attention? Like type of deal. Right. But sometimes I just get upset. So Jessica's always trying to, anyway, it pays off. It takes a while though. So the first couple times you do it, he still throws shit. So I'm <laughs> like, listen, right now I want to get old school with this kid, you know? <laughs> But she, you know, she, she, you know, she stayed consistent and sure enough, he did. He, he was throwing things and then he threw something kind of near us and I looked at him and he, you know, I said, Hey, you know, we, we don't throw hard things around. You can throw them over there. You always, instead of telling what not to do, tell him what to do. So you could throw that over there type of deal. And he goes, I'm sorry. I just, I just wanted your attention, Papa. I'm like, what? This two year old just told me he just wants my attention. That's why he's throwing things. Yeah, like crazy wild. self-awareness. Cool. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. No, that's it's crazy. So oh that. man. Yeah. Did I tell you, I told you guys the, what, I think the last time we talked about the kids, I, I told you the challenge, the first like challenge with the iPad that I told you guys. Yeah. About. Yeah. Yeah. So this is now we're it's like been a week and a half or whatever since with it, that I talked about that last. So we ended up when it in the day, I think I talked to you guys was like, like the day I noticed it. Like it was the day before what that. Um, we ended up taking the whole week off, no iPad whatsoever. And it was wild because um, I'm, and I'm so glad we caught this because it, it was a realization even for us, like how quickly you can allow that to creep uh, in. And then before you know it, and I told you the things that I noticed right away were the behaviors around like he woke up thinking about it like that. Yeah. Was like the, the red let flag for me was that we've trained Max to have like this block in the day where right before dinner, he gets, he gets a little, and it's not even every day, but you know, pretty consistent. He can have it around that time for about an hour, right? That we've allowed that. And then recently we have allowed him to play this angry birds game. And that game was so freaking addictive that he was starting to ask for it throughout the other periods of the day. And then to the point and where that's he, what he knew. Yeah. When he woke up in the morning, I looked at Katrina. I said, Hey, I don't, I don't like that. He's thinking about mm. this thing so much. Like I don't want it to become that regular in his life. It needs, I want to get it back to like, it's a treat or it's, we have, it has its power to where when we really need it, we can use it. And she of course agreed right away. And so I brought that up on the show the next day we took out. And the next day he was like, he was, you could tell he really wanted, it. you know, of course we, these, these small white lies. You're going to have to deal for like a few days, right? It was right. actually literally just a day, two days. The first day was the hardest day. He asked for it and kept asking for it. Mm-hmm. And we just, Oh son, it's not working today. It's broken. We'll fix it. Daddy's going to fix it. Daddy's going to fix this. We kept saying to him. So then the next day, Dad, daddy fixed the iPad. Daddy fixed the iPad. And Katrina's like, Oh yeah, no, but we got to charge it. So she can kind of by day three, didn't Stopped ask. asking about it day four. Didn't even think about it. They In his it. head, he's like, "Fucking dad isn't fixing it." <laughs> <laughs> That's what he learned. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, fucking dad, dad can't only fix, fix this. My dad can't uh, change the light bulb, can't yeah. fix the iPad. <laughs> fucking dad. Yeah. No, no, you got to do the move. I actually heard about this uh, from uh, one of my friends. He said his friend would literally go around and he would turn like um, – the valve for the for like the toilet and he let all the way off so like the water was off and, and so his wife would associate that with it's not working he'd go you know unscrew some light bulbs like he'd he'd do some things that were just like really easily manageable <laughs> yeah and then and she'd be like oh my god like would tell him to like go fix something mean like hold on oh oh but I, i'm doing the toilet right now i was like oh thank you and he'd go to <laughs> wow. all these like really easy uh jobs around the house <laughs> and then it. she'd forget all about it <laughs> wow, <dude. laughs> Like out brilliant, of, dude. Out of, brilliant. Uh, That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> You're know, super dad, manipulative. Dad but. hack, right there. there you go. Up, dude. Yeah. yeah. No, we started doing. We're gonna start doing this thing. Uh, well, I think it was really, really brilliant. Um, Jessica said, "Hey, at the end of the night, she said, when we put him to bed, let's do a recap of the whole day and talk to him about like, oh, today was so fun. What we did today, we started, we woke up, and we did this. And then what it allows you to do is highlight particular lessons or good things." Or talk about difficult things. So we started doing that. I'll let you guys know uh, how, how that kind of works out. You know, Yeah, that'll be interesting. Because right? then what's interesting is things pop up. So the first night I did it, I did it through um, telling a story. So I said, you know, the, the baby tiger and the mama tiger. And basically the baby tiger did everything that he did during the day. And that came, certain challenges came up during the day and I could see his face, you know, yeah, and then yeah. he's like, Oh, what did he do? You know? And I'm kind of teaching him, uh, but next I think I'm just going to be like, Hey, today, here's what, you know, we did today. And this is what you did. And yeah, yeah. just to kind of, so I think that's going to be, I'll let you guys know how that, how that Now, have out. you guys been, cause he's still, obviously he's, he's a little bit younger than Max and he, you're probably coming up though on this age when I remember we started to introduce the iPad and allow him to use that and some of that. Have you guys done that? And have you noticed any behaviors around that? How do you guys manage that right now? We we don't. We only use the iPad for um, if we're going to drive long distances. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, we only use it a couple times when the lights, we had we lost power to our TV a couple times whenever there was something wrong with the fuse box. But um, he, it's mostly TV and we will always- Will he watch TV? Will he watch it? He will, And but it's a, we use a timer. And um, Jessica's really, really like consistent about it. So, and it, if it creeps up, then she takes it away for the whole week. So, like this week, no TV. Yeah. And we'll tell him ahead of time. Hey, I know you're, you know we're gonna watch TV before bed, but yeah. tomorrow and all week, we're not gonna watch any TV. We're yeah, not gonna. Yeah. Watch. And so he woke up this morning. And she texted me and he says, "Oh, Mama, are we gonna? Can I watch something?" She says, "Remember, I said we're not gonna watch TV." So she goes, "Maybe we will, right?" And then he goes. Thank you for saying maybe, Mama. <laughs> That's nice. Even though it's no. Even though it's no, you're not going to watch no. it. I know. Dude, I saw this thing. Uh, I don't know what. I think I was watching, like, <laughs> Katrina's on this kick right now, watching the um, the matchmakers, because they have, like, they have like an Indian matchmaker. Are you watching the they Jewish have, one? Yeah, the Jewish yeah, one. Yeah, we watched that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So I've watched all. So these, good. Yeah, I've watched all. Well, I've watched the old seasons. Is there a new one out or something? Uh, yeah, There's these are, these are I, th I think they're new. Do you know if they're new? No. Oh. I don't know if the Jewish one is new. I just found I've definitely it. Definitely watched the before. show before. Yeah. yeah, I like it because you get to see different takes on marriage, and mm -hmm. it's, a lot of it's based on old wisdom. Yeah, and there's I think there's lessons you can learn. So I, I it's think, also entertaining. So yeah, I I think it's really interesting. So I, I we got she actually pulled me into watching it, and but now I'm getting targeted with all this weird stuff. You know, it's so funny how the these algorithms. I'm so aware of how they all work yeah. now. Like the type of content I see now because I've watched, I've binged watched three of these different matchmaker things. So now you get all of them? Yeah. So this, there's this thing, this trend, I think this hit me on social, I think is where it hit me after I was watching these shows. Um, uh, Self-love weddings. Have you heard of this? Oh, you marry this yourself. This sounds like the saddest well, thing you marry yourself ever. Bro, this is the most narcissistic, crazy it shit. It is, This is bro. what a sign of the time. It is. Please pull you, it up, Doug. You Doug's marry missing. yourself. self Love weddings, dude. That's are people just love, not bro. embarrassed anymore? No, you know? They are, bro. <laughs> what they, a good are, point. they are proud of these things. You, what a great what point. We need, we need to make is, people embarrassed again. We well, call yeah, it sologamy. There's no. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. There's a name for it, even. Yeah. What do you, that means you're just lonely. Solo gummy, like sologamy, like, right. mon like monogamy. Yeah. So, so basically, it means you just you're just lonely. It means you go fuck yourself. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, I. Th that's, what, do you, what do you see, Andrew? You see something too? I see that it's just women. Oh, it's just women. Oh, women, women. women. Women don't want nothing. Men don't want nothing to do oh, that so like, uh, Wait, well, hold on. Sologamy or self-marriage is a symbolic ceremony where you commit to maintaining a meaningful, deep, and loving relationship with yourself. It's a commitment to yourself and not necessarily, okay, so we got it wrong. It doesn't necessarily mean you're in a single 
or celibate. Okay. Now, why the ceremony? Uh, it's so, so, like, why, why? I don't understand. The narcissistic part you pointed out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, hey, I'm doing this thing. You guys want to come to my party? Yeah. Well, because we, we celebrate the, the, the self-love movement's been such a big movement in the last decade and a half, yeah. right? So, it's so like you want to bring like your friends, family, community in and support It's another you massive virtue signal is what it is. I Just another know. way like, I'm... Uh, you're self-loving? I'm self-loving so much I threw a wedding for myself. <laughs> yeah. You, you think you're self-loving? Watch me self-love. I mean, wow. what, what happened to just getting a, a few more cats? Hold on a second. Wait. Some women are marrying themselves complete with white dresses, cakes, and lavish parties. Yes. That's what I saw. I actually saw like full on uh, inviting people and the ceremony hold on a second. and everything. I, I got, I, so Dude, this here's is the like deal. the saddest thing I've ever here's seen. The, here's the difference between men and women. M women are throwing this. The dudes are going to do sologamy bachelor party. Yeah, bachelor party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I skip the cere ceremony? I just want to do the bachelor party. Hey guys, I'm going to be getting married to myself. It's not a party. Don't worry. It's about myself. Tell my wife well, I'm going to throw the bachelor is, party. <laughs> we're going to Vegas next weekend. Yeah. Well, no, we're doing this whole self love thing, you know, honey. I'd almost so rather go to a ceremony where they're marrying a robot, you know, than themselves. <laughs> that is next to you. Like, at least that's so, almost, you know, something. So, bro, I, you know, I definitely, we are a bunch of fucking boomers, bro. We, there's so much stuff, like terms and stuff that I'm like, so a zaddy, you guys know what a zaddy is? Let me guess. It has okay. something to do with being a daddy, but you're- But you're hot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of. I mean, you guys are on the like, right track. So pull it up because like, it's like, to me, it sounded like a sugar daddy, but you don't need to have money in order to be a zaddy. It's just like an older, good looking guy. Is this guy. like Dilfs of Disneyland? Oh, it's a it's a a daddy's an attractive older man. A zaddy is a man with swag who is attractive, and also fashionable. Oh, okay, that's yeah, all it is. So zaddy. it's a, it's a it's better than a daddy. I see. Yeah, it's a okay. I see what's happening. Yeah. So you got good fashion too. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. I I learned this at the the Joe the Joe Coy stand up that I went to, and I was like he was going on this whole bit about zaddies. And I'm like, I am so <laughs> like, I mean, I, luckily that like sugar daddy, like transferred into the joke. Yeah. So it, mm -hmm. like it made the, like the string of jokes figure it out. Yeah. That I was like, okay, it's something like that. But I, afterwards, I, afterwards I had to look it up. Cause I'm like, I've never well, even heard of this before too. They remember we talked about like, like sugar babies was like a whole thing. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so they were like promoting themselves like in their bio as a sugar baby. So that way people yeah. could, Give the money. Dude, stupid. I'm, Did I'm you talking to my my sister in law? Okay, she's in her fifties and she's on like these like single dating apps and stuff. And she was telling last last night she was telling me, she's like, Adam, you would be so surprised at the weird ass shit that I get. Like, listen, she goes, I made two hundred dollars yesterday. Well, no, what did she do? Dude? She goes, I I stepped on a banana barefoot. She got paid two hundred dollars. <laughs> I like how you said it's your sister in law. So your family's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, she told the family. We were all there together. That's her first she, introduction. She wasn't to shy crush. about it. You know what I'm saying? Give, I told her, I'm like, well shit, I'd fucking step on a banana you, for two hundred bucks. Can I just say this? Like, men are just like if there's something weird, yeah. it's probably a dude. Yeah. Like just I mean it's a step up from a fart in a jar. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, isn't that a, isn't that a weird? Isn't that weird? I mean step on a banana. We're For, weird, dude. We're weird animals. It's probably why, because it squishes between the toes or something? Yeah, probably. I have no idea, dude. What, what is that? I don't know. Dude, I don't this, know. What a weird world. I thought so. What is happening? 200 bucks. So I'm like, dude, that's a come up right there for yeah. like, like three seconds of work? Yeah. What's the profit on it? How much does a banana cost? Though? Yeah. It's like 35 yeah. cents. <laughs> Their margins on that are insane. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Build a whole OnlyFans page off of that. I'll smash all kinds of bananas dude, for that. <laughs> I'm going to start throwing that in my story and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, <laughs> people will toe. pay you money to <laughs> not do it. Yeah. Justin, stop <laughs> smashing bananas. I'll send you 200 bucks. I don't want to see yeah. them hammer toes. <laughs> Just want to watch Justin, horrible noises while you do it. Want to watch yeah. Justin climb a tree with his toes? <laughs> oh my god, dude! He's got grip on, oh this, on those bastards. He's like a Wolverine. <laughs> oh god, hey, that's disgusting. I, we have we have butcher box today. Oh no, I want to tell you guys something. Uh, right, thanks for reminding me. Uh, I want to tell you guys something. So I went for two days. So I eat a lot of red meat. For two days, we bought these big ass tri tips, and they were not grass. They were not butcher box. They were just regular store ones. And I like the way they taste and whatever. <laughs> Ate a whole bunch of it, right? Throughout the day, every meal, because we, we made so much, every meal was tri-tip. I could tell a distinct difference in my inflammation oh. from that versus the, because we, the majority of my order now with ButcherBox is the grass-fed um, tri-tips. I like tri-tips. They're versatile, easy to cook. I told you guys how we make them. We we, we do the cast iron, then we put it in the oven. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, I noticed a difference in my joints, the stiffness and stuff. And it makes sense. When I did um, the, the test with Dr. Cabral, Mm. My infl inflammation was a little high. Yeah. And the fatty acid profile is just better. I could feel it. I could feel it. I've been changing my sense. box up to be more pork. 
since mm. I did the the whole the pork chops oh, that you yeah. talked about, and then we did the pork tenderloin Aren't in there. Aren't they good? Yeah. Yeah, I, I normally do not like pork like that. It's too yeah. dry for me. Yeah. It does not taste No, good. heritage pork is totally shit different. Is. I had to add in the chicken nuggets because oh, you guys yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah, nuggets yeah, are awesome. They are yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. That's really Max's good. like yeah. staple. They're the, yeah. best, they're the best chicken nuggets you'll get anywhere besides when you go to an actual restaurant. And I the can't best. help but laugh every time because you guys like <laughs> any restaurant, yeah, that's like, order good. for me. I know, I know. That's Just that's Max's like, staple, yes, I do like staple lunch right there is chicken nuggets. <laughs> Just, like, he gets those Justin chicken nuggets. I like that. Off. I like cheese. I got a juice box. Yeah, I was you just know, gonna like, say, <laughs> he's got like two apple slices, a little ketchup. <laughs> I eat my kids food all the time. Six chicken nuggets. Dude. Guilty. And he's doing a good job. When what he leans out, he cuts out the Cheetos. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Shut up. That's why I lean out. I saw you eating the box of uh, the, the chicken oh, biscuits. Oh, the chicken biscuits. Somebody sent those and sent them to me, but they weren't. You were the no, one it was Juna. Juna from, okay. uh, uh, what's the name of her Food show? Food We Need to Talk. I yes. Yeah, yeah. Great uh, podcast. Uh, but she listens to the show. Oh, she sent it to us. She That's sent a box of She did, of but chicken. she said Adam. But that was you who said chicken biscuits. But you ate them. Yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, knew, I'm not denying that I like the demographic. But there. I remember we had that day where we were all talking about like old, like, like comfort food. Weird yeah, stuff, I, yeah, I remember the vegetable crackers. I used to love those ones. Uh, vegetable yeah. crackers? Yeah, they were shaped like vegetables. They didn't taste like vegetables, though. <laughs> so. Remember they were shaped like a, you guys know what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm I didn't eat them, no. Oh, they were good. I can't remember. Doug, you didn't so it's funny about that yeah. box, though. I loved it on the back. It like pairs well with like easy cheese. You know, and, it's <laughs> kind of, and it has like pictures of like a tomato and then like real fruit, like uh, vegetables behind it's like real disgusting. foods. But like the whole thing is just this process. So disgusting. So gross. Frankenstein hey, hey, thing. So we're, we are going to mention Viore as well. And I do want to say this. Uh, of all the companies we work with, that one has to be one of the biggest, craziest growth uh, I guess cycles ever. Like everywhere I go now, when I see dudes wearing, I see Viore everywhere is what I should say. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. It has exploded it's so much. It's a bit bittersweet for me. I know. We never invested as much. Yeah, it's, it's, it, is, it is a bit <laughs> bitter. It. It's a bit bittersweet because we were, we were the very first people they ever advertised with, yeah. right? So the, up until us, all they did was Facebook ads. So we were there early on. Um, it was early on in our, our venture. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have the capital to be able to invest in it. We all believed in it and what they were doing early on thought it was brilliant because nobody was addressing the, the, the male side uh, mm -hmm. very well. And you know, the Lululemon selection I thought was weak and their stuff was fire. So I, we knew it was going to do well. So yeah, it's bittersweet to see how successful, but you're, they're everywhere They're I mean, they've, they've partnered with so many companies, sports team, you see them everywhere. I rarely ever, go somewhere where people are wearing athleisure wear and not see uh, a it's pair the, of It's the best looking. I don't ever say anything anymore, too. I used to say stuff. I was like, oh, yeah. I thought maybe, I think that they might yeah. know who, like, they're so beyond, yeah. like, oh, you must listen to my phone. Yeah, like yeah, Nike no. level at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're getting to that point where they're that big, man, and their stuff is so good. So good. Right. Oh, I got to tell you guys. So, you know how we did the episode on, on, on bands? We released a new program, Maps Bands, and one of the things about bands that we talked about in the show was one of its strengths, not its weaknesses, but one of its strengths is it causes less muscle damage, meaning you don't damage the muscles as much so you can actually dramatically increase the volume and frequency, which has its own benefits. Right. This is one of the things that bands do. And so we talked about it in the episode and we speculated as to why, but we really didn't come up with any particular reasons. Well, anyway, someone commented under the video and it was, I love this. I love when I right. learn from our listeners. And the person made a speculation and I 100% agree. Here's why bands don't cause as much muscle damage as other forms of strength training because the load in the stretch position is the lightest. And the stretch position is where- Is where the most damage occurs. You tend to typically. see the most damage. Mm. That's where you tend to see the most damage. I do. So, and also on the eccentric and on the eccentric portion, it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until, and when you get in the stretch position, stretching Makes with the eccentric, sense. that's where all the damage tends to happen. Uh, so, ah, there it is uh -huh. right there. Yeah. This, this is, is why, why it's an everyday program. This <laughs> is why bands, one of the values of- this is why, So MAPS bands, for people who don't know, we created a band advanced workout. So this is for people who are like hardcore into exercise, who can gain benefits from training uh, with bands. And it's, is it still, are we still doing the launch sale, Doug? Yes, we are. Okay, so you get a discount on it and you get two free eBooks with it uh, when you sign up. It's uh, mapsbands.com. One more thing, we have a shout out. I want to shout ourselves out. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> it's all right. You did not just shout I us. did, bro. <laughs> so log me. Hey, yes, Yay. I was going to say. Hey. This is... If anybody we, in here, I would, don't need a ceremony. If anybody in here would do a fucking self love wedding, hey, <laughs> no, 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 I don't need a wedding, bro. I don't need to. It's, it's called salogamy. No, 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 no. Our newsletter. A lot of people don't know about this. 
We just redid the newsletter. Oh, it's okay. freaking amazing. It's hilarious. It's oh, awesome. Yeah, dude. Check it out. There's a lot of new stuff on there. Darren stuff. is hilarious. It's, so it's mindpumpmedia.com forward slash newsletter. Go check it out. It's a uh, breakdown of episodes, but it's super, super fun. Well, since we're plugging ourselves like that, you may as well plug the subscription thing that we're doing right I now. Did. I did. Okay. You I did. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay. on Instagram. Yeah, it's we, yeah. literally, literally at the beginning of this episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was the beginning. You're right. It was again. No. Yeah. All right, look, you've probably heard of all the benefits of cold water immersion. Cold dips uh, regulates your hormones, raises testosterone, reduces cortisol, increases uh, endorphins, increases norepinephrine, gives you energy, makes you feel good, all backed by studies, also has lots of longevity benefits. The problem is getting yourself a big metal tub, filling it with ice and water, big pain in the butt. Well, check this out. There's a company called The Cold Plunge. They make one for your house with the filter and everything. Fill it up with water, leave it. It's clean. When you're ready, pop in, use it every single morning. Better than coffee. And it's amazing, again, for your health. Go check them out. Go to thecoldplunge.com. Use the code MINDPUMP and get $150 off. All right, back to the show. First question is from Deanna Ukery. Can you use light weights instead of bands for trigger sessions? Oh, you can. Okay, so first, for people who don't know, trigger sessions are found in MAPS Anabolic. And what they are is on the days you don't work out, you do really light five to eight minute kind of pumping sessions, typically with bands, to maintain this muscle building signal and to facilitate recovery. And they're pretty remarkable. They really do uh, produce significant results or better results if you add them versus when you don't do them. Now the question is, should, can you use light weights instead of bands? You can, but bands are superior, not just because bands are convenient, but because of like what we talked about earlier in this episode. Bands cause less damage. They just do. They just cause less damage than weights. So because trigger sessions, the goal is to maintain the muscle building signal, but minimize damage or in best case scenario, facilitate recovery, bands are superior. They just are for this particular purpose. And I've experimented with all kinds of different forms of resistance with trigger sessions and bands just do, they just do the best. Yeah. If I, if I'm in a position where let's say I don't have bands, but I have dumbbells or something like that, I'm going to use like literally 60% of yeah. the, you know, 50 super light. light. Yeah, yeah. Real, real light, uh, your weight. I do not want to even come close to training to failure with weights, yeah. uh, to, to get this. And, I, and all I'm doing is literally just trying to uh, pump the blood in there. Right. That's right. It. That, That's really the only thing. It's like, it's easy to overdo it with, uh, um, dumbbells versus with with the rubber bands and two like i guess yeah the other alternative to that is just body weight but um the bands just provide such a unique uh, stimulus that doesn't um cause that kind of damage so it really helps to get blood flow and facilitate recovery this is why the new program maps bands is the only maps program where you're doing strength training every day and i don't mean like you're doing strength training every single day because you can do that with bands and we say it's advanced meaning you need to have some experience, but it's not advanced in the sense that you're going to overtrain. Most people who've got some experience will do phenomenal with a program like that. Had we switched the bands out for weights? No way. Oh, yeah. It would definitely never have worked. So bands offer that unique ability to be able to send a muscle building signal, but minimize damage. And that you could capitalize on. By the way, for people who don't use trigger sessions, it's as easy as this. On your off days, you can even do it like this. Pick a body part that is a weak body part and do a few sets of a banded exercise for that particular body part two or three times on a, a day on the off days, watch what happens to your gains. Mm -hmm. Next question is from a -A Aaron Stevens. While in a cut, is it better to hit your protein for the day or stay within your calories? I love this question. Yeah. So long term, okay, so it's going to be one of those, it depends. Right? Yes. How low is your protein? This is a good question because I could argue this either way. So could I. So is it like how low is your protein for the day or how high over the calories are you? Mm -hmm. But if it's all within range, long term, I think it's better to hit protein for most people. Now, if you are you have a particular date, you need to lose weight by, your protein's still okay, still relatively high, then I would say calories. But high protein has lots of benefits. Muscle building, appetite suppression. They're showing it's got brain effects that are that are good. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, if you're, again, if you're within kind of like a reasonable range, then I would tell people, go ahead and hit those, those protein targets. Yeah. You know, okay. So it also depends on the, the, the person and their body type as far as like how they hold on and build muscle. Right. So I was actually just talking to, uh, a friend of ours who she's trying to cut and she has been running like pretty low calorie artists and her body just holds on the most. I had a, my, my ex-girlfriend was like this, like she, 
like touched weights, built muscle. We could diet her down to like 1,300, 1,400 calories for weeks upon weeks, and she just didn't lose any muscle. Like, and she lost hardly any weight, period. Like, some people just hang on to weight way better. I'm the opposite. Like, I look at a treadmill, weight starts to fall off of me, and muscle will go right with it if I don't hit my protein intakes. So it also depends on the person. So yeah. if, I, if I'm talking to that person, I'm, like, really pushing her to get lower and lower on her calories because it's hard for her mm -hmm. to do that, and she's got to be low on calories just to get her to lose anything whatsoever, and her body hangs on to muscle. If the, if the opposite is true with that person, I'm not really worried about going over 100 to 300 calories for a day. I want to make sure I hang on to every bit of muscle for that person, and we hit their, our protein intake consistently also depends okay uh what do they do consistently more of meaning are you the type of person like me who struggles to consistently hit their protein intake if that so if it if comes happened over and over yeah that yeah. happens uh, uh, all the time then i need to make that decision here I, I have to eat that protein it's like i am i'm already have a hard time hitting it consistently and then here i'm faced with a day of like oh man if i hit my protein intake it's going to put me over two, 300 calories. But if I go under, it's like, geez, is this going to be the third day in the last week that I don't hit my protein Great intake? Great point. Not mm -hmm. a good idea for me. I'm going to hit my protein intake. So I know that was like a lot of nuance, but that's the truth with something like this. It is now, what will the science-based community tell you? Calories. If your goal is to lose weight and lose fat, then, and nothing will make the biggest difference in you doing that than calories. And they'll say, cut the cut the calories don't overeat the eat the calories just to chase protein because yeah. it's not like all oh, this muscle is going to fall off your but body you know what's what's interesting about this is that when i'm training or working with the average person if i just tell them to hit their protein targets and to prioritize it from whole foods and to prioritize it in their meals meaning it naturally lowers their calories they automatically eat less calories yeah, yeah. because it's so it's so satiating thinking. You eat less. I'm not talking about shakes. I mean, literally, <clears throat> oh, you need to eat 130 grams of protein a day. Eat it first in your meals yeah. and make sure it comes from whole foods. And then don't worry about calories is what I typically say. Now, if I tell someone to hit your calories, but don't worry about your protein, it's much harder to hit the calories. It's much harder to stay low well, calories. Plus, if you go over, I mean, the next day you make adjustments. I mean, sure. I, I don't see what the or or what if this if this person is also let's say this person's in a deficit and they need to hit protein so they're going to go over two or three hundred calories a day but this person is also lifting weights yeah. so that day those extra calories go are going to get prioritized to building muscle yeah. Yeah. Right. it's not going to go store you're not going to like be in a calorie deficit for let's say a week two weeks right stay in a calorie deficit and your strength training and then one day oh man i'm low protein so now i gotta hit and then i go over 500 calories let's say that's gonna get that's gonna get prioritized to building muscle. You're not gonna put on a bunch of body fat from that. So I would I would hit the protein intake. Yep. Next question is from the Eagle family. Can you increase strength but not muscle mass? Likewise, is it possible to gain muscle in one body part and lose muscle in others? A recent DEXA showed I lost muscle in my trunk but gained else elsewhere. Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So let's start with the first one. Can you get stronger without gaining muscle? Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Your muscles can fire with more force. Yeah. They can fire in a more organized fashion. This all comes from the central the, right. the central nervous system. You basically you essentially become more efficient with yeah. a muscle lift. recruitment. Yeah, like you can be you can squat and get better at the skill of squatting, gain no muscle, but because you're better at the skill of squatting. Now you squat more. Perfect Remember, example our is our Olympic lifters. Look at an Olympic lifter and why they're not bigger than bodybuilders. Yeah. Because they have gotten so proficient at those lifts that they didn't have to keep right. adding a bunch of muscle right. mass. Now, that being said, if you get stronger, 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 at some point, you're going to add muscle. At some point, you'll get so efficient, fire muscle so well, so organized, especially if you feed yourself properly, yeah. muscle will come on. By the way, for the average person who just looks to build muscle – especially in the first year or two of training, that's usually what it looks like anyway. Stronger, 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 boom, muscle. Stronger, 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 boom, muscle. It's usually in that particular fashion. Now, the second part, can you gain muscle in one area and lose it in others? Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely. If you train one part of your body and reduce training on the other part of your body or you start prioritizing lifts that work one area over others, your body will adapt and morph. Your body will shape itself depending on the stresses that you place upon it. So- you can 100% do this. By the way, bodybuilders often do this mm -hmm. on purpose. When they're trying to create a balanced physique and they want to add more leg size, they don't gain as much upper body mass at the same time because they'll still be disproportionate. Right. They tend to take the volume away from the upper body, 
put out in the lower body so that they can make themselves uh, more balanced. Right. So if you're like, yes, it's going to affect a lot of muscles. They can core like you're isometrically stabilizing, but you're not working it the same as if you're intentionally, you know, loading like a crunch, for instance. Right, right, right. You could also see it if you were uh, like, let's say the volume was all equated, but then the stimulus for the upper body in this person, so this person's upper body changed their lower body lost muscle, right? Uh, maybe you were doing more novel exercises for the upper body, right? right? You changed uh, programming. You got unique things that you weren't doing before, and your lower body were sticking to the same basic movements that you always do. Uh, your body's pretty well adapted to that, and so it didn't get as great of a stimulus as the upper body did. So right. there's a lot of different. I'd also like there. to see the numbers on the DEXA scan because it's it's. I mean, it's compared to other things. It's really, it's it's accurate, but it's not so accurate that you know yeah, a quarter can be a margin of error. Yeah, a quarter pound or something like that. I mean, it could be. It could be off. Whenever you're using these things, you want to look for trends is what you're looking for. Next question is from Tatiana ZP Real Estate. Are you better off running a mile a day or three to five miles a couple times a week? Which would be more beneficial for cardiovascular health and lower impact on joints? And this person said in parentheses, they don't have any race goals. This is just for mm -hmm. leisure. Oh, mm -hmm. a mile every day. Yeah. Yeah. By fact, first off, it's better for your cardiovascular health yeah. to do a little bit every day versus a lot sometimes. For your joints, way better. More practice means if you do a good job, you'll get better at running. The joint issues that come from running come from the fact that people don't run properly. They don't have good biomechanics or technique, just like people who get hurt lifting weights. People tend to go run until they're tired. They don't look at it like a skill. Well, if you run less, you're less likely to get so fatigued, your form goes out the window. And if you practice it every day and you try to run well, you'll get better faster. Um, so, and by the way, by the way, I want to say this. For almost every physical pursuit, for almost every adaptation you're looking for, you're, you're, if it's all equated the same, and I say almost because there's definitely times where this isn't true, but when you're looking at the same equal time, volume, all that stuff for the week, right? So in this case, three to five miles a couple days a week versus one every single day, you'll get better results overall by doing a little every day than you mm -hmm. will a lot. Same thing with strength training, same thing with flexibility training. So your body learns things. It's how it learns things. I would also encourage this person if it's for cardiovascular reason and there is no like pursuit or race competition to actually explore the stairmaster, the elliptical, the rower, mm -hmm. swimming. Mm -hmm. Like um so I mean switch it up. I mean if you get if you're looking just to get the cardiovascular benefits from it uh, running is actually not even the best modality of all those different modalities that as far as overall health on the joints and things like that. I mean, swimming, swim for that duration, yeah. you know, or, or go on the stairmaster for that duration or do the elliptical for that duration or do like hill sprints for that. Like there's some things that you can do salt bike. to keep that yeah, salt bike, to keep that, the heart health up there, um, without just running on the treadmill all the time. So explore those other options too. Totally. Look, if you want to follow some of our programs, but you want to start small, Go to Instagram, Mind Pump Media. For less than $5 a month, you get a new workout every single week. It's a MAPS workout programmed by us. Um, and again, it's only it's less than $5 a month. You sign up, new workouts all the time, exercise demos. We teach you how to do them. It's pretty awesome. Go check it out. By the way, you could also follow us on Instagram. Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano, And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 